Typography accounts for 95% of web design. Your font choice can be critical for performance, readability, and branding. Over time, the recommendations for using web fonts have changed as browsers have adopted new standards. Now in 2021, I wanted to revisit the best practices for using web fonts. The first to talk about is system fonts. So the fastest way to use a font on the web is to use no custom font at all. Browsers provide a list of web safe fonts that you can use without having to load anything externally. If you take a look at my editor on the left, you see that I have a basic HTML document with some placeholder text and a little bit of CSS at the top of the file. And really all I'm doing is putting a few styles to make it look nice. And then I'm adding a web safe font. So when I refresh this page, you'll notice that there's no external requests made to fetch a font because this font, Georgia, is provided by the browser. We can confirm what font it's using by clicking the inspector and going and looking at the body and you see that it says there is an 18 pixel size Georgia font. Arguably the best website fonts are the system font stack. And I believe this was popularized by GitHub. It's still what they use on their website. And you see we're defaulting to the Apple system font as well as a bunch of fallback fonts. So if this isn't a thing, if I'm on a Windows computer, it would fall back to different fonts. So if I save this and I reload my browser, Again, you'll see that we're not making any external requests, but if I inspect these elements, you see that now we're using the Apple system font, which is San Francisco. And this font looks really nice. Okay, so pause. If the system font stack is the most performant, then why wouldn't everyone just use that? Why are web fonts even a thing? And the reality is that things like branding, design, and cross-browser consistency are really important. And that's why 82% of web pages end up using web fonts. In this video, I'm gonna cover five different areas for high performance web fonts and end with my recommendation for how to use web fonts in 2021. First up is self-hosting your fonts. So as of 2020, Google Fonts accounts for about 70% of all web font usage. Now with over a thousand different fonts, they provide really easy access to not only quality fonts, but multiple formats, and also pretty good defaults. But Google Fonts is no longer necessary. So as of 2018, even Google themselves have been recommending to self-host fonts if performance is your number one priority. Really the reason Google Fonts got popular in the past was because of caching. So let's say I visit some site and it loads the web font Roboto. If I visit another site and it's also using the web font Roboto, then that first one had already been cached in my browser. And when I went to the second page, it was much faster. Last October, there was a Chrome update that disallowed sharing a cache across sites. And Safari has actually worked this way since 2013. So it's for security. And this actually basically gets rid of all of the caching argument of why you should use Google fonts. So let's say that we're gonna move forward with self-hosting. It's important that you still properly cache the font file on your own website when you're hosting it yourself. For example, on the right, I have my own personal site where I'm self-hosting my fonts through Vercel, and you see that I've added this cache control HTTP header telling the browser that this asset never changes, it's immutable, and that I wanna cache it for a year. If you absolutely need to use Google Fonts, I'll include a link in the description for some optimizations that will help you get the most performant Google Fonts. Number two is the font display property. So font display allows you to change the rendering method of web fonts with values like block, swap, and optional. The best way to explain this is through a demonstration. So let's take a look at my editor on the left. I've added a font face property in CSS to load an external web font. And I've included this font file in my local directory. Then I've also added a new font family rule for enter telling my document that that's the font I wanna use. Now on the right in my browser, I have fast 3G simulated for my network speed. And when I do a hard refresh on the page, you'll see that I load the font, but the font had to swap. So this is called flash of unstyled text and it looks pretty bad, especially if your fallback font doesn't really look anything like the font that you're swapping to. And we wanna avoid this at all costs. We also wanna avoid a flash of invisible text, and by using font display of block, this is similar to what a lot of browsers do by default. So if I refresh the page, a hard refresh, you'll see that we actually see nothing. The screen is just completely white until those web fonts come in, and this is 
equally a bad experience. So what can we do? The best option here for high performance web fonts is to use font display of optional. Now what this does is it has an extremely low block period, like 100 milliseconds. And if it can't fetch that web font within those time, it falls back to your fallback font without having a swap period at all. But before I do a demo of font display optional, I wanna talk about the second thing, which is preloading. So the browser assigns different loading priorities to different resources, and by default, CSS will be loaded before scripts and images. Now you as a developer can actually influence that order by choosing which resources you want to preload. Fonts are discovered late by the browser by default, so we want to influence that loading order by using preloading so that we can fetch it as soon as possible and then cache it immediately. This is really important because it can improve performance metrics like time to interactive and first contentful paint, which are core web vitals that Google's gonna start using to influence search rank. So you should definitely be aware of these. Let me know if you wanna hear a future video about these going more in depth. If we look at my editor on the left, you'll see that I've added a link tag to the head of my document telling the browser that I wanna preload this font file that I then reference in my CSS. Now this in combination with font display optional means that when I refresh the page, when I do a hard reload, there's absolutely no flash of unstyled text or invisible text. And that means that you have no cumulative layout shift, which is another core web vital. If I simulate 3G and I do a hard reload, you'll notice that we're not able to fetch the font in time. So the browser fallbacks to the default font. Now we can make this a little bit better experience. Let's take our system font stack that we discussed previously and add enter into the first font in that stack. So if we save this and we reload the page, now the fallback font is San Francisco, which is much, much more similar to enter. As a comparison, I'll just turn off fast 3G and do a reload and you see that Really, there's not that big of a difference. The next two I wanna talk about are variable fonts and subsetting. So variable fonts allow us to combine multiple weights and styles into a single font file to reduce the number of network requests that you have to make. So most font files contain multiple languages or different special characters, which will increase that file size. Subsetting allows you to strip back to only the things that you're actually using. So if I'm serving up a website that's only for Latin speaking languages, I can subset my font file down to just those characters. Let's look at an example so we can understand how this affects the file size of your fonts. In this folder, I've downloaded some fonts from Google Fonts, and I also have an optimized file that we'll show at the end. So first we have all of the different font files for each of the weights. And you'll notice that each one comes in at about 290 kilobytes. Now if we compare that against the single variable font file from Google Fonts, it's at 748 kilobytes. So this file is bigger, but it also allows us to only specify the different weights that we wanna use in one file and prevent having to make multiple network requests. But we can do even better. So if we combine this, a variable font, with subsetting to only Latin languages, you'll see that our optimized WAF2 font file is at 37 kilobytes. So this makes a huge difference for users coming to your site with slower network connections. Okay, so in conclusion, there's four things that I want you to take away from this video and my four recommendations for high performance web fonts in 2021. Number one, use a variable font. Number two, preload your font file. Number three, self-host instead of using Google Fonts. And number four, use font display optional to prevent layout shift. The final thing to mention is a future CSS proposal for font metrics override. And this will allow you to still swap out your web fonts while having a lot less layout shift. This hasn't landed yet, but it's something to keep your eye on as a future improvement in this space, maybe 2022, we'll see. Let me know in the comments if there's any more font optimization tips I could make to even further reduce the file size and performance of my web fonts. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next video.